In this video we're going to look at unit analysis and what unit analysis is is, is a technique that allows us to convert from one type of measurement to another type of measurement. So we have these um, conversion factors here and we can use these conversion factors to help us convert from one type of measurement to another and I'm just going to focus on distance here. So I've got some common conversions, inches to feet, inches to meters, meters to kilometers. So I have both metric and uh, American type standard system. Um, and we have these types of conversion factors for weights. Uh, for example, there's 16 ounces in a pound and 2,000 pounds in a ton. We've got conversion factors for time, 60 seconds in a minute and all those kind of things. So this technique would work for those types of conversions as well. All right, so to help motivate this, before we get into some example problems, um, what I want to highlight here is that these two things are equal. Okay, even though there's a 12 here and there's a 1 here, this equal sign is very important. 12 inches equals 1 foot, right? Those are the exact same units of measure. So let me ask you this. What is the answer to this question right here? What is 12 inches divided by one foot. What would that be? Well, hopefully you came up with one, right? It's not one inch, it's not one foot, it's just one. If I take the distance 12 inches and divide it by the distance 12 feet, in other words, how, in other words, how many one foots would go into 12 inches? One, right? What if I say, and I write it like this, okay? How many 12 inches will go into one foot? The answer is one. Let's look at another one of these. 5,280 feet equals one mile, all right? So if I take 5,280 feet and divide it by one mile, how many one miles will go into 5,280 feet? One, right? Because these are exactly the same. You basically have a number divided by itself. And this is an important characteristic of these conversion factors. Any conversion factor expressed as an equation, if you take one of those and put it in the numerator and another one and put it in the denominator, you're going to get something equivalent to one. Okay, So we're going to use this fact to help us do unit analysis. Now one is a very important number because we have a property that says any number, I'll use x, any number times one is itself. Right? What happens when I multiply by, by one? nothing. We get the same exact value. We don't change the value when we multiply by 1. All right. So keep this in mind. Here's our first problem. Um, let's say we want to figure out how many inches are in a mile. How many inches in one mile. Now there is a way to do this without unit analysis, but I'm going to go ahead and show it with unit analysis, and I'm going to get, encourage you to understand it because there are problems that are very, very difficult to do without unit analysis, so learning it with this type of a more straightforward problem um, it, it can be very Im Im helpful in the future. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out where are we starting and where do we want to go. So what we're starting with is one mile. All right, so I'm going to write that down. I'm going to start with one mile. And what do I want to change that into? I want to change that into inches. All right, so I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to change it into inches. So I look at my conversion factors. How am I going to get from miles to inches? What are my chain links that's going to get me from miles to inches? What do I have over here? Well, I've got feet into miles and then I've got feet into inches alright so I can go miles to feet and then feet to inches so I'm gonna use these two conversion factors so I'm gonna start with this first conversion factor here and what I'm gonna do like I showed you a second ago is I am going to write this conversion factor as a fraction and I'm gonna multiply it by one mile now which number do I want to put on the top and which number do I want to put on the bottom, numerator and denominator? Well, the way you figure that out is you look here and you say, well, I've got one mile. Now, this mile is technically in the numerator, right, because it's not a fraction. So I want this mile to go away, so I'm going to take my one mile here and I'm going to put it in the denominator. 
Okay, and then in the numerator, I'm going to put 5,280 feet. Now remember, this fraction right here is really just equivalent to 1. So when I take this and multiply it by a mile, I'm not changing the value. I'm still going to end up with something that's equivalent to what I'm starting with, which is a mile. Now I'm going to take my next conversion factor. We use a different color here. And I'm going to convert from feet to inches. So notice feet is in the numerator here. So since feet's in the numerator, I'm going to put feet in the denominator and then 12 inches here. All right, And this is also equivalent to 1. That's why this works, because I'm multiplying by 1. All right, so do you see what happened here? We took this conversion factor and wrote it as that fraction, and we took this conversion factor and we wrote it as that fraction. That's how you do these. You figure out what conversion factors you want to use, and then you write them as fractions. And again, you have to figure out what's going to go in the numerator and the denominator based on what you want to go away, right? So here's a mile, and there's a mile. I have a mile in the numerator and a mile in the denominator, so those can cancel. That's why I put this mile in the denominator. Then I have feet in the numerator and feet in the denominator, so those cancel. Now what am I left with? I'm left with inches, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so now I have to figure out what is 5,280 times 12. And I'm just going to grab my calculator to do that. So let's see, 5,280 times 12 is a lot. Well, relatively a lot. So I get 63,360, and I'm left with inches right here. See, that's, that's the only label I have left is inches, which is what I want. So you treat the labels, the feet, miles, centimeters, and all that, sort of like they were numbers. All right? So if you have a mile in the numerator and a mile in the denominator, those cancel. Um, if I wanted to figure out how many inches were in, let me do a different color, say five miles, then I would just start with a five here, and I would go through these same conversion factors, but then to get my final answer, I would take five times 5,280 times 12, and I would end up with uh, 361,800 inches. All right, let's try another one with these same conversion factors. Let's convert metric to uh, a standard system. So maybe we could figure out how many centimeters are in a yard. Let's do that. How many centimeters? Now let's do a football field. That's more exciting. How many centimeters in 100 yards? Right, A football field is 100 yards. Okay, 100 yards long. So we want to know um, how many centimeters. How many centimeters long is a football field? Not including the end zones, just the 100 yards, because I don't know how long the end zones are. I'd have to Google it. OK, so where are we starting? We're starting at 100 yards. And we want to change that into centimeters. Okay, so I want to cancel the yards out and turn it into centimeters. How can I get from yards to centimeters? Look over here. Which conversion factors do we need? Well, we can go yards to feet, feet to inches, and do we have inches and, and right here, inches to centimeters. Oh my goodness. Okay, you got to just find a little find a little path that's going to get you there. So this will get me from yards to feet. Then I can go feet to inches. And then this one I can go inches to centimeters. That'll get me there. Okay? So let's set it up. Let's start with this one. Okay, this one right here. That'll get me from yards to feet. What's going to go in the numerator? Hopefully you said three feet. I need to put the one yard in the denominator so it will cancel with this yard right here. All right, let's go to the next conversion factor. This will get me feet to inches. What is going to go in the numerator? Well, 
I have feet in the numerator here, so I want to put feet in the denominator, so I'll be able to cancel these feet. And I'll put the 12 inches up here. Last one. This conversion factor will get me from inches to centimeters. Okay, so I have inches in the numerator, so I need to put inches in the, in the denominator. So 2.54 centimeters. Now it's all set up, and that should get me centimeters. Probably move my equal sign over a little bit. So let's do our canceling. Well, how about orange? So yards will cancel with yards. Feet will cancel with feet. Inches will cancel with inches, and I'm just left with centimeters. Perfect. So now I'm going to multiply 100 times 3 times 12. 100, I could do that part in my head, times 3 times 12 times 2.54, and I get 9,144 centimeters. All right? So this is the idea of unit analysis. Okay, one more type of problem I want to show you is when you're changing square feet or square yards into square inches or something else dealing with area. This is a little bit different, okay? And this can be a little bit tricky. So this has to do with area. Let's say we have a rectangle. Okay, you remember how to find area of a rectangle? Um, let's say this rectangle is, oh, I don't know. How about three, let's do feet. Three feet by five feet. What's the area of that rectangle? Remember how to do area? three feet by five, five feet. To find the area of a rectangle, you just multiply. So the area is 15 square feet. And usually it's written feet with a little two, or sometimes you see 15 square feet. All right, this doesn't mean the 15 is squared. What it means is that there are 15 of these, like a foot by a foot by a foot, Oh, sorry, that's not very even. Let's try it. Let me try to make that a little bit nicer. They should be equal. So if I go three feet here, one there, that looks a little bit better. So if I cut it like this, like this is one square foot, and then I'd have five across the bottom, and I would end up with 15 of these square feet. So let's say I wanted to figure out how many square inches that is. So a square inch would be very tiny in here like that, an inch by an inch by an inch. Well, we have this conversion factor that tells us that there's 12 inches in a foot, but that doesn't mean that there's 12 square inches in a square foot. As a matter of fact, there are not 12 square inches in a square foot. Um, in order to figure out how many square inches in a square foot, we know there's 12 inches in one foot. We need to square both sides of this conversion factor. And we get 12 times 12, which is 144. So there are 144 square inches in a square foot. Okay? So if I want to figure out how many square inches are in 15 square feet, I can use this conversion factor. And I'll show you one other way to do it here in a minute. And I'll put my square feet on the bottom and I have to do 144 square inches on the top. Okay, that's tricky. When you're dealing with square feet or square inches or cubic feet or cubic inches, you have to modify these conversion factors. So 15 times 144 is 2,160. This square feet would cancel with this square feet and I'd end up with square inches. Now another way to do this, if you don't want to do this piece over here, you could do your 15 square feet and take your conversion factor and do 12 inches over one foot, just like it is right here. Okay, but I have square feet here. So remember, you get square feet by taking feet times feet. And I only have just the one conversion factor, so you'd have to do two of them. Okay, so you could do it like this, and then say, I'm going to take my square feet, and I need feet times feet to cancel a square feet. 
and then you'd be left with the same thing. You'd still be doing 15 times 12 times 12, which is exactly what we did up here. 15 times 144, which is 12 times 12. So you're still going to get 2,160. And then you have inches times inches, which is square inches. Okay? If you're doing volume, that's going to be cubic inches or cubic feet. So you're going to have to do three of these conversion factors or cube your original conversion factor. Let's do one of those, and then we'll call it, call it a day on this video. Let's bring in this pretty box I made here. So this is where you'd get volume, all right? If you're finding the volume of a box, volume of a box is length times width times height. So let's say um, I was doing the volume of this box, and um, let's say I was told that the volume of this box is, oh, let's just go 100,000, why not? cubic inches okay so they got that by multiplying this times this times this in inches let's just pretend we already know the volume and I want to know how many cubic feet is that or cubic yards let's do no let's do cubic feet cubic yards is gonna be a lot of work let's do cubic feet you'll get the idea okay how many cubic feet is that So we're going to use this conversion factor again. There's 12 inches in a foot, but now we're doing cubic. So you're going to need to multiply that by that conversion factor three times or cube that conversion factor. But let's write it out the three times way. So I'm starting with 100,000 cubic inches. So I need to put my inches on the bottom. So I'm going to do 12 inches, 1 foot, but I need 3 of these because I have cubic inches. 1 foot, 12 inches, 1 foot, 12 inches. So now these cubic inches, I need 3 of those to cancel that. And I'm going to be left with a foot times a foot times a foot, which is cubic feet. So that's good. That's what I want. Now, to get the number of cubic feet, since these 12s are in the denominator, you're going to divide. So when you take out your calculator and do this, you're going to do 100,000 divided by 12, take that answer, divide it by 12, take that answer, and divide it by 12. If it's in the denominator, you're going to divide. Okay? So 100,000 divided by 12, divided by 12, divided by 12, that gives me 57.87, I'm rounding, cubic feet. Okay, so if you have cubic feet, you have to multiply by the conversion factor three times. If you don't want to multiply by it three times, you could use that other method I showed you, which is to take the original conversion factor and create a new one by cubing both sides. So if I cube both sides of this, and I do 12 times 12 times 12, that tells me that there are 1,728 cubic inches in one cubic foot. And then I could use that conversion factor just once. Okay, start with my 100,000 cubic inches, multiply by this conversion factor that I created that says there's 1728 cubic inches in one cubic foot then you cancel the cubic inches and instead of dividing by 12 dividing by 12 dividing by 12 you're just gonna divide by 1728 which is 12 times 12 times 12 so you're really doing the same thing just kind of in a different order so if you punch in 100,000 divided by 1,728, you're going to get 57.87 cubic feet. Okay, so you could do it either way, whatever makes you happy. The big thing you have to remember is when you see conversions that involve square feet or cubic feet or square inches or square miles or cubic yards, you have to um, do something with these conversion factors 
or use them multiple times in order to do your conversion. Well, I hope this video helped and good luck with unit analysis.